Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Glad you're all here today because we got a fantastic video planned for you and it's all about this baby right here in front of me. What we're looking at is a 320 watt low profile lightweight reference design that we're going to be building here today featuring the new PCB light engines from Pacific Light Concepts, the Photo Boost Strips. Now these things are pretty badass if I do say so myself. They're rocking 96 of the Samsung LM301B white diodes for the Cree XPE high efficiency photo reds and packing it all into this 560 millimeter linear form factor. Now with this spectrum and this high efficiency components and this form factor really allows us to do just about anything as far as builds and designs are concerned. What we're looking at here is specifically designed to flower out a two by four area with high intensity and maximum uniformity as you can see by the design. But this build or this reference design is to show you the basic concept of not only this and the components that you could use to build it, but the concept of eight boards on a 320 watt meanwhile driver. I think that combination is gonna be the most versatile and the most used and can be used to cover the most spaces. Like I said, obviously this is a more longer linear two by four fixture. We could easily use 23 inch heat sinks and build a more square fixture, similar to a two by two fixture, um, as well as the probably the most used will be simply doubling this build up to create a 660 watt DE comparable design, obviously, which with much better uniformity and extreme efficiency. So that's the concept of this design and what we're going here and what we're trying to show you. So without too much further ado, let's get into the parts, what they are, what they do, and show you guys how to build this beautiful light. All right guys, so we got everything right here in front of us that we're gonna need to build that beautiful light I just showed you. And the best part about this is how simple, quick, and few components it takes to put it all together. So just like all my tutorials and all my builds, we will go over each individual component, what it is, its function, where to get it, as well as what to look for as alternatives if you can't find these exact things or links go out of stock, anything like that. So like we said at the beginning, the star of the show here is the new Photo Boost strips from Pacific Light Concepts. They're rocking the LM301B white diodes, the Cree XPE high efficiency photo reds, and packing it all into this two foot linear form factor. Now, when we're looking out at the market, there's nothing else currently that's going to check all those boxes. Combine that with the extreme high efficiency of these components or of these diodes, nothing else is gonna come close. We're looking at around 2.8 micromoles per joule at the chip level here for this build. So calculating in drivers, we don't have to worry about optic losses here. We're looking at over 2.6 at the final system level. Like I said, this is all accomplished by the beauty of these photo boost strips. So there's really no alternatives out there. Even if you're looking at strictly just the plain white, say Samsung Influx H strips or the F strips, any of these single linear models of them, nothing has even the amount of whites. This has more whites than any of them, um, combined again with the XPE high efficiency photo reds. So that's, these are available again at Pacific Light Concepts, pacificlightconcepts.com. Link in the description. And obviously I am a co-founder and part owner for, so take that for whatever, what you want it to, but uh, yeah, let's get going with this build. So the first major component here are the heat sinks. Now these are really the kind of the unsung hero of the build and what are going to allow us to, to do all the magic with the boards. So the boards are great, but they obviously need to be controlled thermally and they need to be held structurally so we can build something out of them. This is what allows us to do that. Now what this is, is the one inch profile from heatsinkusa.com. Those of you in the DIY world probably are well-versed in Heatsink USA. Anyway, this is their small linear profile, the one inch. Now we're gonna be ordering these in 46 inch cuts and we're gonna need four of them overall to complete this build. We're gonna be putting two strips on each board. So this heatsink fits this build perfectly. This is really designed for around 1400 milliamps per board or less, I would say. You, I, it tests out, it actually, it is within spec at 1750, but it's, it's at the upper end. The reds are running at around 75, 70, 70 to 72 um, junction temperature there. The whites are, are much lower. They're only like 62 or something. They're fine. 
But um, anyway, we want to make sure the reds are controlled in all the builds that we do with the photo boost strips. So I recommend this heat sink for 1400 or less. Um, Pacific Light Concepts, we're currently working on a custom extrusion that'll be a more thermally bulky profile of this, as well as possibly some built-in reflectors. It's not gonna happen for at least six months from when this video was released, so just hold your horses. This is the profile we're gonna go with for this build, but just know we're working on it. Um, and if you have a, if you find a heat sink out there, an alternative, I would say your benchmark thermal would be you're looking for around 10. This, this profile is 14 degrees C per watt um, thermal resistance, and I would suggest Ideally, you'd want to hit around 10 would be a, a really nice profile to get. So somewhere between 14 and 10. So if you're looking for alternatives. Otherwise, heatsinkusa.com, one inch profile, 46 inch lengths for four foot builds, 23 inch lengths for two foot builds. Now, the only modification we need to do in this build at all actually comes to these heat sinks, but it's very, very simple. It is simply a quarter inch hole so we can fit some screws in here you'll see in the next step here, but it's just a straight hole and it is at a half inch in and a half inch up or however you want to look at it. It's a half by a half inch and that's just a straight hole. Now we're going to put one on each end of each heat sink. So that's a total of eight holes overall and that'll get us started on the build. So let's just keep moving right on to the next component and this one, since we started with the boards and then we've gone to the heat sinks, what we're going to need next is to marry the two together. And now the boards, um, you can find the whole pattern on PacificLightConcepts.com, but truthfully, we're not even going to need it. The whole point of this build is how quick and easy it is, um, as well as the performance. And both the speed and ease, as well as the actual performance, we have found is better with thermal tape than it is with physically mounting with screws. Now you could do both, or you could use a high performance thermal paste underneath, but truthfully, with the adhesive over the full board to create a full mating surface and fill all the air gaps, thermal tape has been the most superior solution we've found. Now we've tested 3M, we've, I have some Berquist um, specialty things coming, as well as this generic Chinese thermal tape from eBay or Amazon. And the, uh, the 3M did perform about three degrees or uh, two to three degrees better in some situations at the higher um, drive currents, but from 1400 and down, and especially under the Chinese generic thermal tape performed amazing, surprisingly amazing. And like I said, it, the fact that we're just gonna roll it on and, and uh, put the boards on is fantastic. Um, performed great. The only issue with that is the Chinese come in a 20 mil or a 30 mil, and obviously we are right there in between. So you need to order the uh, 30 millimeter, and when we put it on, we will just cut it off with a razor blade. The extra five mils will cut off with a razor blade. We'll go really, really simple. So like I said, this is the best solution. We're looking at 25 mil roll, 25 meter roll here, costing around 16 bucks, Amazon primed, versus the 3M solution costing around 60 bucks. So that's why we're doing this. And like I said, two degrees C. Um, at the higher currents, it's not even, not even worth it. So this is what we're going with. And I think that will make a lot of you guys out there happy. And especially when you get into building it, you'll, you'll be stoked. This part here is the frame. So we've talked about the, the boards, the heat sinks, putting it all together and doing it. But now we would have to connect all that. And that comes with the frame. And for this build, I chose 8020. Everyone's pretty hot to trot on 8020 extrusion right now. And this is just the, uh, it's called 10 series or one inch profile. Basic, nothing over the top. It's extremely sturdy, fairly lightweight, and obviously the accessories and things we can like slide in and attach with 8020 is awesome. Um, I got this from T-Nuts. It's a Canadian company and they have great prices as well as all the accessories needed. This is, uh, these two are 20 inch because of the, the form factor that we're building for a two by four area. We went with 20 inch wide, don't wanna go 24. There's just no need to go wall to wall. 20 inches, plenty wide here. Um, and I got two of them and it was about under $10. So you're looking at about $10 in aluminum. Obviously it had to be shipped, that's another 10 bucks, but overall is, is the best, cheapest solution I thought of while still looking at, you know, keeping the quality, the performance, this and that. Now, if you guys are looking for alternatives to that, um, obviously 
go to Home Depot, some basic aluminum. We can look at, uh, this is obviously an L. This is kind of a small one, like a quarter inch or a half inch here, but any size kind of L aluminum we could build and we could attach heat sinks to, like so. Or the closest thing to what we have here would be a aluminum square and we could drill and run wire and things. Kind of the benefits that we have here are pretty close in the square tubing. Anyway, I'm choosing to go 80-20. The price difference is just a few bucks minus the fact that you have to ship it and wait a few days. But anyway, it, it's just a little, little superior product. You can go with, with those basic aluminums, but we're gonna be using one inch 80-20. And to complement that, we're only gonna need a few accessories. And that's part of this build. I, I actually over-engineered it and then simplified it. We're just gonna be using a few T-nuts. We need three quarter inch and any size T-nut you want. These are the economy ones. I think these are like, I don't know, like 13 cents or something, pretty cheap. I have it all in the spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end of the video. So we're gonna be needing eight of the T-nuts and the three quarter inch quarter 20 screw to complement it. And you know, obviously that, we drilled eight holes in our heat sinks and we need eight screws to attach them. All right, so moving right along, kind of to the last major component of the build here, and that's the driver. Now obviously there's a few possibilities we could do to run whatever wattage we need at 1400 milliamps, but the industry standard, the most efficient driver out there, dims all the way to off, and combined with an eight board setup, fits fantastic, and scales up obviously to 600 watt builds just by doubling it. Uh, the HLG 320, H-C 1400 B is what we're going with for the build. 1400 obviously signifying the drive current that we're going to be running and 320 is our, around our wattage and with this build at the wall that's about what we're going to be doing. We've got about 300 and change watts of, wa of light combined with some drivers looking at around 330 at the wall or so. So it'd be a fantastic build. This driver, like I said, industry standard nothing to go wrong there. To be connecting this driver up, we are going to be using these gland connectors. There's quick connect versions, there's other things. I think these are the most accessible, um, most accessible, cheapest solution. And all it is is a three pin connector on each side with some glands to make it waterproof. And that is what's going to allow us to connect the driver to the power cord as well as the driver to the DC side because we're gonna be running this off board. Because if we're making a low profile build, you know, this beautiful low profile thing, the last thing we wanna do is slap this hot ass driver on top of it. Um, we could easily, it would actually fit in there pretty low prof profile and look pretty good, but I'm just, I'm just a fan of off driver build, you know, um, remote driver builds right now. They're just, uh, keep the heat away. It's a little more versatile, low profile anyway. So that's what we're gonna be doing and these connectors are what are gonna allow us to do that. Now, something similar to these, but able to fasten to our frame, is this little junction box. Now, there's there's tons of options out there for junk, small junction boxes, project boxes, this and that. But I really like these ones because I found them one on Amazon Prime, which is the best, and they were only seven bucks. As where it's so, so it's essentially the same price as this, but it can be mounted to the frame, and it came with the glands. So these two PG9 glands came with this box. Also has connectors in there. I'm gonna use Wagos myself in the build, but uh, it actually does have a little terminal connector already to go in there for you. So I thought that was pretty good. And when you see it on the frame, it looks great. Like I kind of just alluded to, we're also gonna need a few Wagos, standard, um, just Wago 2s, if you got Wago 3s, whatever, it all works just fine. We're gonna need 18 gauge solid wire. Solid makes it easy to put into the terminal connectors as well as route it where it needs to go. Um, 18 gauge is plenty to carry the current and voltage for this build. And then lastly, the last component, the last essential components are power cords. Now I said we're gonna be running this driver off board, which means I need to run a cord from the, D, the, dri the wall to the driver, and then from the driver to the light. So we got two power cords here. If you're gonna put the driver on board, you know, obviously you don't need the, uh, the DC one. We can figure that out shorter. But these are cheap, you know, you can get them on Amazon. You can probably find them around the house, especially for the DC one. It doesn't need a plug. Um, 
So two power cords. And that really wraps it up. So for those who want a little bit more than just a plain build, you can get things like this. This is like a uh, channel filler. I actually can't remember what the exact name of it is, but it just fills the gap of the 8020 or the, the 10 series extrusion. Got these little gaps. We can run wire back there. And then once we put this in there, it caps it off. It doesn't go the full way in. It's a little channel and just has some flared ends that pop right down in there. We can cut it to the size we need. Um, it's a great accessory. And like I said, it cleans up the build, makes it a little spiffier. While you're on 8020.com or whatever, check it out. They have end caps. These will go and get them in black, red, whatever colors they have. Again, just cleaning up the build a little bit. And then the last thing that was pretty cool that I thought, uh, shout out to Grow Anonymous told me about these. Um, they're a little, a little pricey, like six or almost eight bucks a piece. But these can be used instead of, say, an eye hook, as where normally we would just use an eye hook and a little T-nut piece to make something to hang your light. Well, 8020 makes these specific little hangers. These are for when you make like tool shelves, things like that you can hang, but they just slide right into the 8020 and we can put them wherever we want, adjust it or fast, you know, kind of give a little tack glue where it needs and it just looks really clean as you saw in the completed build. So these, these little plastic pieces, stuff to style up your build, make it your colors, this or that. Obviously, um, not necessary to get the, the light built, functioning, and growing big ass beautiful plants. That's, that's not necessary. But part of the cool factor of DIY is doing exactly what you want, making it yours, customizing it. And that is just one quick, easy way. There's, there's plenty of other ways, but that's just some, some quick, easy ways to do it. So. All right, so we're just gonna start off by building the frame itself, attaching the heat sinks to the frame, and then we'll put the boards to the heat sinks and then connect everything electrically. So to start off, we just need to space the 8020 out as best we can. And we're gonna be putting the thin side to the 8020 so that the flat face is facing away to mount the boards on. Now we just kind of space it out roughly so it's there. And then before we get to anything, we are going to feed these 8020, or excuse me, these little T-nut washers down the 8020 right to where the um, heat sinks will line up. Okay, so we've got the frame put together, and before I tighten it completely down, what you'll notice, the 8020, I'm sorry for the noise, but the 8020 or the heat sinks are movable within the 8020. We have the heat sinks mounted to the 10 series 8020, and it's looking pretty close to what it's gonna look like here in the end. Next up here, we're gonna put thermal tape across each one of the heat sinks so we can mount the PCBs after. Before we do that, we just wanna clean it, Make sure, don't have to, don't have to lap them. Don't have to make sure they're just, you know, make sure there's no nicks or major. But other than that, we are just gonna start taping the thermal tape on and go. Nothing like good peel off, always feels good. So also make sure the bottom of your heat sinks, or I mean, excuse me, make sure the bottom of your boards are clean. Give them a quick rub down with alcohol. It doesn't have to be much. They should be fairly clean, but just a thought. All right, the heat sinks and the boards are the same width. So what I like to do is I like to line up one edge, like this back edge, and then roll the, roll the board down and continue to press. Now don't press on the diodes, but press all around the diodes, all the way up and down the board. Give it a good squeeze. It's just an aluminum PCB. You're not gonna break the PCB or anything. Just don't squeeze the diodes. 
Make sure you squeeze all the, the ends and get it going. And then we're gonna go to the next one. Now, again, remember I said alternate. We have Pacific Light Concepts on this side on this one, which means it'll be over here on the next. Boards are on, and it's time to wire this baby up. So, the concept for these strips is to run them in series. I know a lot of the strip builds in the past are basing them off parallel builds and adding strips up. For these, and overall in general, anything is best to be in the LED world is best to be ran in a constant current situation. So, when and if we can, we will try to do that. And with these builds, works out perfectly. And this is just going to be one long string of eight strips. So. For sake of visualization, if this were the this is the negative terminal right here of this board, if we were to start here, so attaching the negative of the driver to the negative of here, our next move would be from this positive to this negative, 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 from this positive to this negative from this positive to this negative, which would leave the last terminal open to attach the driver's positive, so we'd have our negative and our positive, and one giant string connecting them just fine. I'm gonna start my string in the center here and work in and out and connect it. It'll be a little different, but I wanted to show you that one long S string to give you guys a visualization of what's going on as far as um, the series connection of all these boards. All right, so now we have all eight boards wired in series. Like I showed you in the visualization, you could start at one end here and just continue the series all the way in an S pattern until you get to the last one, be the most visually and uh, mentally easy way to do it. But for me, logistically, I wanted to start in the center here for clean wire logistics, and uh, so that's what I did. Um, I went with, if we start at the negative from the driver here, our next move would be positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive here, travels all the way down the frame, under, under, to here, this negative, and then we continue on. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and finally ending here with the last one, last positive for the driver. Now, if I'm gonna give one tip in retrospect, it's that you finalize and realize what wiring configuration you're gonna go with and lay it out before you put the boards down. That way, if you know exactly which ones are going to be connected in the center of the boards before you mount them, you can put these little connector wires, they're pretty small, and there's not much room to work, these little connector wires that go board to board in the heatsink, you can put those on at the beginning when you mount the boards. So when your two boards are off, you could just put them together and then mount them as one. I think that'll make it a little easier for putting these connector wires in. It's not the end of the world, it's not too hard at all, but uh, I just think that might might help some other people with uh, with a little bit of ease. So that's that's my tip. Anyway, like I said, I have this all connected up, and let's get it uh, let's get it fired up just to make sure it's working before we go any farther. Because after this, we pretty much are just going to put the driver together and clean it up on uh, on the frame. So from these open connectors that are sitting here, we have a negative and a positive. We're going to put the positive to the positive terminal of the driver, and we would put the negative to the negative terminal of the driver. Clip those in, you know, look through the back, make sure there's a good connection, and we should be ready to fire up. Ta-da! So, full dimming capabilities, and we are looking at 330 watts on the dot at the wall. This is 120 volt power, so you might save a few on 240, but overall we're getting full 
full power and I have a 100K pot on the driver currently. So awesome. So, right on. We know the wiring works. Now let's, uh, let's get into the driver, wire logistics, and clean this build all up. Get you guys off to the races. So let's get the driver ready to go, meaning we want to hook it up from the wall to the driver, as well as from the driver to the light, and we'll even throw on the dimmer while we're at it. So before we even go anything, let's look at the driver, see what it's got. For those of you guys who know what this driver is, I'm sorry, it's a little tedious, but anyway, we have the AC or the wall power side over here, which is signified by a blue, a brown, and a green or yellow. Um, on the other side, the output side, we have both the DC out, which will power your LEDs, as well as the dimmer leads. Now, Meanwhile's has a, Meanwhile has a legend on both sides to tell you exactly what everything is and the color. So positive is the brown, negative is the blue for the DC, and then when we go to the dim, the gray is the positive, or the black is the negative, but what's interesting is they use the same wires as they do over here, they just put little color tags on there. Nonetheless, just read the legend, you'll know what's going on. So, to connect the wall to the driver, we're gonna need a power cord. So, what I have here, you can, you know, obviously get one that's the correct plug for what you need, but this driver will accept everything from 90 volts up to, um, I believe, 305 or something. Yes, 305. So really you're good to go. Just make sure you have the right plug and good solid gauge. I suggest 16 gauge or higher, um, or lower I should say, not higher. Um, 16 gauge or lower would be the way to go. So to connect these, you could, um, you know, you can just use Wago connectors all day long to, to make all these connections. But to make it a little cleaner, a little better looking, we're using these IP67 uh, gland connectors. All these are is they have three pins connector in the center on each side, and then some glands to kind of waterproof the connection up. Overall, it'll look really good. And they're just screw terminals in there, so you're just gonna insert your wire, screw it down, put the, put the gland, uh, gland on, and it'll hold the cable tight. So that'll go over here on this side, connected via this gland connector. Now, on the other side, the DC side, I'm using a longer cable. This, you could get away with 18 gauge, but I, I'd prefer 16 gauge, especially if you're running it, running it a little bit, but 18, 16 gauge, um, and doesn't have to be too thick. The only key here is, is that I'm using a standard three conduit power cable so that I can create a ground to the light. Since, you know, meanwhile drivers are, are already grounded, so if you were to mount the driver on the light, it would be grounded. But since we're mounting it away, if anything were to happen, I, you know, I wanna show you guys the safest build possible. So we are gonna be running a ground on the DC side as well and grounding it back to the main driver here. And just like the AC side, we are gonna be connecting it with uh, one of these three pin, three pin uh, IP67 gland connectors. Now, that leaves the last terminal here is the dimming lead. Now, if you just leave this open, put some, uh, you can either put Wegos on it or wire, uh, or not wire, excuse me, electrical tape, something like that, just to, to keep them from uh, shorting out. You don't need to run a dimmer. You can run this baby at full power all day long. But if you wanted to put a dimmer, what we're gonna need is a 100K ohm potentiometer. They're only like a dollar or two, pretty cheap. You know, if you get a cheap one, you might only be getting 96 or 95K ohms or something. You might not get the full power out of the driver. So, you know, if it's $3 versus $1, maybe you spend for the $3 pot or something. Anyway, um, a potentiometer is a pretty basic thing and we're just gonna be connecting it up, negative in the center, positive in the, on one of the wings. It, it technically doesn't matter which wing you use, but uh, this is how we have it wired up. And I just grabbed these from PLC, honestly. It's already wired up, ready to go in the PLC six and we're gonna connect it to the corresponding negative and positive and that'll allow you to dim all the way from zero to a hundred percent okay guys so like i said connecting up the driver here 
and we are using these double-sided gland connectors. So they are labeled with a small N, L, and G for live, neutral, and ground. And that corresponds on power cords on the AC side as black is live or L, white is N for neutral, and green is ground or sometimes yellow. Corresponding on the driver's side, it, again, there is a legend on the driver, but it is brown for hot or live, blue for neutral, and the green with the yellow stripe is the ground. Anyway, all you do is you put it in there and you tighten it down with a little teeny Phillips screwdriver and you're good to go. Just remember to put the glands on the cable before you screw them in. That way you can uh, obviously screw it in. Anyway, you just pull it up to the threads, tighten it on, and uh, both sides will be waterproof. There and just on the other side. Quick note, you will have to cut the um, cut them a little bit to make sure they fit in the glands. You won't be able to use the natural length that Meanwhile gives. You gotta cut it a little bit so that it doesn't stick out of the gland. So just like that, we have a waterproof AC connection over here. And we're gonna do the same thing over on the DC side. Go show you that. Okay, so now for the DC side, and it's essentially the same thing as the AC, we're just obviously dealing with different wires here. And that is important. Obviously the DC out of the driver does not have a ground, it's just a positive and negative. And I talked about it earlier, we're gonna be adding a ground. So on the driver side of the connector, we have the brown going to the L connection, which is, stands for live, so that's considered the positive in this, in this instant, and the blue wire going to the N for the, to, for the neutral line, and that's signifying for the um, negative here on the DC side. And that would leave the ground open, but like I said, we're adding a ground, and that's gonna happen right here. So in addition to feeding the DC in through this gland, I've also gone with just the standard 18 gauge wire that I told you guys to get here. You can use any wire to do this, um, but the solid's nice because you can jam it up to the gland and uh, attach it in there. So anyway, a solid piece of wire here that's gonna run back and attach to the driver right in the center hole. We'll look at that in a minute. Anyway, so on the driver's side we have L to the brown, N to the blue, and G is gonna to go to whatever ground wire you choose. Now we move to the other side going towards the light, and we are using an AC power cable here, but we have to remember we're using DC. So now, white is positive, black is neutral, and green is always is ground. So to the L, or the live, we put white. To the N, or neutral, or negative in this instance, we put black, and G, as always again, is green and ground. And that'll show up on the other end. Close it up and we are good to go. All right. So now we have the gland tightened up and we have a tight connection for the DC from the driver to the light. But the last thing we have to do here is just connect that little ground wire that we added in there. I'm going to, uh, or I already have, zip tie it here to the DC. And what I'm choosing to do here, just because it's generic and it'll always be connected, um, is I'm just going to kind of ring that, uh, it's stripped and, and exposed and we're just going to put it around the center hole in the driver and that way it'll always be connected to the driver. And if anything were to go wrong on the other side, say you bump something, a wire shorted out, this or that, whatever were to happen, it will come back, um, anything would come back short in the driver, which is the driver itself is grounded, all meanwhile HLGs are grounded, and then obviously it would go out into, the, uh, into your circuit breaker. But this is just to be protective, this is an extra step. If you skip it, you skip it, but uh, I highly suggest you ground it. It's just takes five extra seconds and no big deal. Plus it's a lot easier to find three conduit power cords that have a ground in it than it is to uh, special order two, two conduits. So that's it. So anyway, have that secured. Oh, 
if you got a uh, like a little terminal connector or something, great. Otherwise, just a twist will do. And now the light's grounded. Okay, so now to put all that driver work we just did onto all the light work that we did earlier. We saw it fire up. Now we put the driver together, how it's actually gonna go. Time to finally wire it up. So you have the whole driver connection we just made and out of there you'll have your DC wire. DC wire. From there, we've already put it into the box. So this will help you with the assembly. All you're doing is feeding it into the gland just like you've done before, tighten it. Wires are loose on the inside and we will connect those in a minute. Also what we've done, as you can see, we put T-nuts. These are just eight millimeter T-nut, um, or I guess it's quarter 20 T-nut, but uh, T-nut and the screw on there. And this will allow us to slide this whole assembly right down this channel and put it right where we need to go. Tighten it down where it needs, where you decide it to go. For me, it's right up here in the center where I will put the, well, just off center so I can put my, uh, my leads that I left out earlier from my circuit boards right into there. Because again, this is the DC from the driver. So now, driver's in there, ready to go. All we need to do is connect the positive and negative from the circuit boards to the positive and negative in here, as well as hook up the ground. Okay, so now we have the light built, we have the driver built, and we have the driver fastened to the frame, or at least the DC line of the driver fastened to the frame here. And it's time to connect the two and get things ready to fire up. So, like at the beginning, we have the lines coming out of the circuit boards. We have a positive and a negative. I've put a little red tag on here so you guys can see that this is the positive. The one without a tag is the negative. And then this last black wire here that I've attached is the ground and that'll connect in there to the ground line. I put a little green tag or it's neon, but you get the point. And how I've connected it is I've just um, screwed it around the screw slash T-nut that is connecting the junction box to the frame. So it is connected to the frame and a T-nut there which will ground it to everything else that's connected and conducted metally there, or from metal there. Obviously there's just one gland open here, so we're gonna be feeding these wires up these glands, and since I last saw you, I've just thrown some Wegos on the positive, ground, and negative. Since we are running a DC side here, we have to remember what our polarity is, so we can connect them accordingly. So, we will start by going, uh, we'll go negative in, so no tag on here, we'll go negative, and this will go to the black, or whatever you've deemed as negative of your build. And close the way go down. Wire should fold in. Next, I will go to the positive, which in this instance is going to go to the white. The, uh, the white from that DC line. And then lastly, we have the ground, which is from the from the frame coming in. Now using the Wego, the 222s, these things can fit in this box very nicely. Just watch out for the terminal connectors. If you don't have Wegos, remember many of these things do come with the terminal connector. I just, I'm choosing not to use it. So once that's done, you should probably test fire it up. But uh, other than that, we can cap it off and uh, screw this down. Off to the races. All right guys, at this point, let's plug the light in fire her up and make sure all our work was done correctly. So if you plug her in, she fires up, we are right where we need to be. If she doesn't fire up, my number one suggestion is to double check your wiring to make sure you have completed the series wiring of all the boards correctly. Make sure your polarities are correct, make sure you're connecting what needs to be connected where. That is my number one suggestion if you have an issue at this point. Then if not, work backwards from there. If we're all good and she fires up, Make sure she goes all the way to full power. Should have about 330 watts at the wall, plus or minus a few. And make sure she dims all the way to off. We're there, fantastic, congratulations guys.
you essentially at this point have a fully functioning, working, amazing light. And uh, proud of you guys for building it. Last thing we have to do is just put on the hangers or whatever hanging system we're gonna use here so you can put this over your plants. What I chose to do is I'm using the slide-in tool hangers from 8020.net. There's a few places you can grab them, but um, they are a little pricey. They're around six to almost $9 a piece. I think I paid like $8.50 for these ones and I have two of them. So I do understand that's a little bit of a cost if we're trying to go a little more on the economical, there's definitely some more options. So anyway, I use those, they slide in right into the 8020 and then I cleaned it up with what we'll talk about the, the frame finishers. But if you wanted to go a little more economical route, a simple quarter 20 threaded eye hook, doesn't have to be super long like this, but this is just, just what I have. And I have a just a nut and the T-nut washer. That'll slide right in the 8020 and you can either do four or two or whatever. For these, I have them just a little bit of play inside my thing, so based on where my cord is hanging and the balance, I can get her leveled straight. Has just a little bit of adjustment, probably can only move about a centimeter each way, but that's enough to give me my, uh, my hanging adjustments. You guys might have seen me dick with it earlier in the video. Um, you can also do that with the eye hooks. They'll be able to slide in there, or you can use four points of hanging, things like that. So that's my suggestion on hanging. Once you have it hung, guys, you are totally ready to go. What you can do in addition to that is what I, what a lot of places would call frame finishes. And that's just things like what you saw here is the channel filler, the black end cap, the black channel filler, the black end caps. They also make other colors. Here I have some red. I thought it might be cool for, you know, photo boost adding the red to have some red liners. Um, I like the black looks cleaner myself. I'm much more of a, a minimalist, a keep it simple kind of thing. But anyway, they make red, they make blue, they make yellow. I'd imagine some other colors are possible. I, hell, you could probably even 3D print this if you guys are, are really that into it. Um, anyway, these are just extra accessories and things to make your build have a little bit of a cool factor, clean it up a little bit. Uh, these, I will say these channel fillers do hide wire very well. You can put uh, run your wire down the 8020 channel, then just cap it in here. You don't see a thing. As you see right here, I have some cutouts for wire to come through. You can do a little tighter tolerance than that, or you do loose. Either way, um, just things to finish up the build, make it your own, um, do whatever you want. But at this point, you should have a fully functioning, working 330 watt light pushing over 2.665 at the system level, around 2.8 at the board level, ready to hang over your plants. So thank you guys for supporting me and Pacific Light Concepts for all these years. It really has been amazing. And we are extremely, extremely excited about the launch and future of the Photo Boost strips. This, this is really just the beginning. So I hope that this reference design and build has given you a solid platform and basis to go from here and build with. All the parts and components are linked in the description below, as well as there's a more detailed spreadsheet or PDF on the Photo Boost specific page on pacificlightconcepts.com. So once again, guys, I thank you guys very, very much. Like this video, subscribe if you're not, and I will see you guys next time.